Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to have a closer look of how we set up the Altus VTOL kit. Uh, a lot of people have said they're having problems with their VTOL because it sucks through the batteries so quickly and they, they can only get under five minutes of hovering time with the VTOL. Well that's the fact of life with a VTOL. They're just not designed to hover for long lengths of time like a quad. They're really just designed for a quick VTOL takeoff or even a hand launch in plane mode and then maybe a VTOL landing. That's the only way that they make any sense really. There's no way it's going to be as efficient as a normal drone or even a, a plane. For me uh, was drawing between 30 and 40 amps in hover mode. In uh, wing mode it would be under 10 amps, you know 8 amps or something like that, so nice long flight times. Uh, and uh, so that's why I would have to use a LiPo, not a, a lithium iron. So I'll explain how I set up the flight control board. I'm using uh, an Atom RC Navi Deluxe flight control board. You could use a speed b flight control board. As long as you've got enough uh, PWM outputs to handle extra servos uh, and an extra motor, then you'll be good to go. Right, I'll give you sort of the, the, the principle of uh, this sort of VTOL flight. We ba have basically a normal fixed wing. In, in fact, if you have an INAV set up for your Altus that works well, then keep that, start with that, uh, and you can build on that to add the extra VTOL functions. In the aeroplane mode, you just have the normal mixing for an aeroplane mode, like your ailerons and your VTOL mix. You can even have differential thrust if you want to. I never tend to have differential thrust. The only extra thing is that uh, you have two servos and you need to add mixer lines that tell the servos to point straight ahead basically. Then we have a transition mode. Uh, in this mode it also starts up the rear motor because that is sort of overlapped with the, the tricopter mode or the VTOL mode. And then we have full VTOL mode uh, where all the three motors are spinning. We also have a little bit of your stabilization there as well. And we also have uh, your on the rudder stick as well. Now, when you're first fitting the VTOL kit, the instructions tell you to get a servo tester. And at one extreme, you'll have the servo pointing straight up. The other extreme, you'll have it pointing straight ahead. So the servo only goes through 90 degrees using a servo tester. Uh, and if the teeth don't line up properly, then you may end up a little bit further back or a little bit further forward or a little bit down or up. And uh, you don't have to worry about that because these servos can actually travel a lot more than 90 degrees. So you actually want the servo to, to go all the way back like that without the prop touching the wing and equal amounts backwards and forwards. So you get a nice axial yaw when you're in hover mode. And we set up that range of movement using the endpoints of the, the uh, servos in the outputs page. And we'll go and do that in a minute. All right, the flight control board connections now. Here it is mounted in the Altus. And first set of pins are S-Bus. We're using Express LRS. We don't connect anything to the S-Bus pins. The next two are the motors, left and right motors, like you would normally have for your Altus. You wouldn't change that. Uh, so that's S1 and S2. S3 and S4 are the aileron connections, uh, same as you would have for your normal Altus setup. Next are the tail connections. Again, you would already have them set up if you've been flying your Altus. So that's S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S7 and S8 are the tilt servos. And then finally on S11, we have the third motor. So we need to change the timers in INAV so that we can actually use this as a motor instead of a servo output. Up the front we have the Express LRS connection there. We've got the GPS going in down here. And for power, uh, I already had two XT30s uh, for ESC power going out to the wings. Uh, instead of trying to solder on another motor connection, I just made up a, an XT30 Y lead and so I've got two XT30s going into one set of ESC pads and one going into the other. Doesn't matter which motor connects to which, they're just providing power from the battery through to the ESCs. wonder if I can pull it out to show you. So there's my XT30 Y lead one, uh, going into one of the ESC pads. One of the motors going out to the left wing there and the other connection going to this ESC which goes down to the back motor. 
Now, setting up in iNav, this is iNav 7. I haven't done it with iNav 8 yet. I don't think there's much difference other than I think the PID profile is called Control Profile in iNav 8. Now we'll go to Mixer. First thing you need to do is click this. PID Profile will use the same index as Mixer Profile Index. That's so that when you change from aeroplane to tricopter modes, the PID profile will also change automatically. Now the prop rotation direction doesn't matter at all. You can have the wing motors spinning inwards at the top or out at the top, even both going the same way. And the tail motor can spin clockwise or counterclockwise. It really makes no difference at all. As long as each motor is providing lift, then it's going to work. So we're starting off with a previously proven profile for the Altus. This is the profile that I've been using to fly my Altus before I converted it to a VTOL. It's a very good idea to start with that, then you can just build on that. Uh, the thing we've done here is selected timer outputs or changed the timer outputs so that we can plug in a third motor. I've chosen timer 1 to be a motor, which is on... On this board it's S11 and S12 would give us motors and timer 3 is motors and the rest of the timers can be servos. I think with the Speedy B F405 wing board you don't have an S12 output so you'll only get the option of S11 there. So that means that my two wing motors are plugged into S1 and S2 and the tail motor is plugged into S11 on the board. Now in aeroplane mode we have two motors so we need to set up two motor lines there. We don't need to set up the third motor at this stage. This is how I've set up my Altus. I've added a bit more weight to the pitch just to give more pitch authority. The rudder doesn't really matter. And I've played with these positives and negatives here to get the control surfaces working in the correct direction. Now we need to add lines for the tilt servos. I'll just delete them and add a couple of new mixer lines and they will go on servos 5 and 6. And we use the max input value that just means we can tell the servo to go to a particular position you can change the weights here to make sure that they're pointing straight ahead and not up you can play with them with a the battery plugged in if you want to uh, and this is what i needed plus 100 or 2000 on servo 5 and minus 100 and that'll change to 1000 on servo 6 let's save and reboot that so at this stage you can plug a battery and probably take your props off always Take your props off if you're mucking around with it inside on the bench. And just see where the tilt servos are pointing the motors. They should be pointing straight ahead. If they're both pointing up, then you just need to change that to a positive and that to a negative. Uh, and you'll see in real time, once you save and reboot, that they'll reposition themselves. They may not be perfectly straight ahead. That's not a problem at this stage. Uh, we can adjust that with the outputs. Now at this stage you'll go to the modes page and as well as all your normal plane modes you would add Mixer Profile 2 and Mixer Transition. Uh, now I have them on channel 12. We'd have this on a three position switch. Have it set up like this so that in this position here, in the back position it's in aeroplane mode. In the middle position, you get this transition mode kicking in, and it's also in tricopter mode, so you get the stability of the tricopter. And then in the full forward position, it's purely in tricopter mode. Now we'll go to the outputs page, and we can make uh, some adjustments to make sure the motors are pointing directly ahead. You have to set whatever ESC protocol you can use, and whatever servo refresh rate your servos can use. Now the tilt servos are servo 5 and servo 6 and if we go back to the mixer just to remind ourselves servo 5 is set to 2000, servo 6 is set to 1000. So in the outputs page we'll adjust those values. So servo 5 it was 2000 and I found that bumping it up to 2040 uh, made the servo 5 motor point directly ahead and on the servo 6 it was the 1000 value and uh, bumping it up to 1020 made the motor point directly ahead. You can measure this with calipers, digital calipers like Desaro did in his video or you can eyeball it but uh, they just both have to be pointing directly ahead uh, otherwise you'll get some thrust angle changes. Now you'll see these other values have been changed as well therefore getting the tricopter 
uh, angles correct so we'll do that a bit later on so now it's time to set up the mixer profile 2 or the tricopter mode we'll switch to mixer profile 2 there and we need to set up profile 2 as a tricopter so we'll go to the mixer choose tricopter here and load and apply Now we need to tick this again and make sure that the PID profile or the control profile is the same as the mixer profile. The timer outputs that we set up in, the, in mode 1 will carry through, they're fine. Now this will set up uh, as a conventional tricopter with a tilting tail servo, which uh, we are not using that sort of tricopter, so we'll get rid of that line. And it sets up motor 1 on the tail. We have motor 3 on the tail, so I need to switch these around. So I needed minus one on the roll for motor one, one for motor two, and zero for motor three. And we also need to make that one 1.333 and that one minus 0 0.667. Near enough. Okay, so now we have uh, the pitch going in the correct direction. So we've got the, the two wing motors at 0.667 and the tail motor at 1.33 so that gives you even pitch thrust forwards and backwards and we've got the roll stabilization and stick direction going in the, in the correct direction if you find that uh, your stabilization is reversed or your stick for roll is reversed in tricopter mode then you may need to switch the uh, negative and positive there now we need to add some mixer lines to take control of the tilt servo in tricopter mode so we actually need six lines here so we'll just add six new mixer lines there we go six and it's relating to servos five and six so we'll change these to five and six and again first of all to get it to get the servos to point straight up we need the max input And on my setup, I needed this to be minus 100 and that to be plus 100. Now, these next two mixer lines are for stabilized yaw. And I found mine needed to be minus 50 to make sure that the sort of the range of, of movement of the, of the tilt servos when it's in tricopter mode it was, was sort of symmetrical on each side. And these final two lines are for the mixer transition. So the mixer transition just tilts the servos up to 45 degrees when you choose the mixer transition mode. And one needs to be positive and one needs to be negative. We can also adjust these later on to make sure it actually is right on 45 degrees or if you want to go to 50 degrees, you can, you can do it here as well. Now the way this is set up, the tilt servos will only tilt forward they won't tilt backwards when it's in the tricopter mode so we need to go into the outputs page and sort of extend the endpoints when it's tilting back and uh, these are the values I was talking about before so that would have been 1000 and this would have been 2000 now what you need to do is reduce this until the propeller just touches the nacelle so I reduce it down to 800 and then the propeller was just touching the nacelle and you want to back it off a bit from there uh, so I found 830 gave me about 10 millimeters clearance and on this one 2220 gave the same amount of clearance and you want them to be exactly the same amount of clearance uh, so that's with the tilt servos tilting back as far as they can and Desaro in his setup video shows how to do this uh, measuring with his digital calipers I actually did measure mine as well um, just to make sure they are identical. So we save that. Then we go back to the mixer. So now back on the mixer, we can adjust this weight here to bring the tilt servos back to vertical. And I found that seven, minus 72 and 72 did that. Again, you can measure it accurately with calipers. And you'd save and reboot that. Uh, and I think to get the, 90 to the 45 degrees correct, I think I dropped that to 90. And minus 90 but you can do fine adjustments like that and save and reboot and then you're pretty much ready to go 
with the modes. In tricopter mode, I think I found it best to take off and land in angle mode. If you land in acro mode, it's a little bit too loose, so I would remember to switch back to angle when you're coming in to land using tricopter mode. Uh, connect up your radio and, and battery and make sure all your modes are working correctly. And check that the motors are reacting in the correct direction for stabilization and from uh, stick movements. If anything is reversed, like if the uh, roll stabilization is reversed, then you just need to switch the, the negative and positive on this line here. Uh, and if in pitch, the motors are spinning up the wrong way, like if you lift the tail and the tail motor spins up, that's, that's the wrong way, then you may need to change the negative and positive in this section here. But, uh, if that's all working well, then you're pretty well ready to go. In tricopter mode, you can actually enable ailerons and elevator control surfaces as well if you want to, to assist a little bit with the control uh, when it's moving through the air. I didn't find it necessary, so I've just left it as pure tricopter. But yeah, just add mixer lines for servo 1, servo 2, servo 3 and servo 4 and just have uh, reduced weights if you want to play with that. But yeah, I don't think it's necessary. Oh, we're doing pretty well.